to be a dreamer But you know I found uh. My mama used to pray that shit, see me in jail It's fucked up, she gotta see me in jail On a visit with Lil Poppy, it hurt even though I seen it be well They got a smoker with a kid in my cell Damn, and even worse, my dad black don't wanna see me do well It's even that, a black people so I'm like Juan, um, from Philly Gonna be taking you on my journey to playing the next level Currently 18, uh, about to be 19 in a week Um, you know, just, just Basketball always been my passion. Nothing's really changed with that. Uh, there's always been ups and downs on the road, but I've always found a way to somehow get through it. You know, so I'm just trying to take y'all on this journey, show y'all just to show coaches, people, family, friends, doubters, anybody. Um, just to show them that I'm, I'm capable. I'm, I'm more than capable of moving on to the next level. It ain't always been easy for me, but the hardest, the hardest part of like you can see it in old highlights, old videos, everything. Uh, mental, mental is a big is a being a, me, being mentally strong is a big challenge. Uh, it's like at the same time, you gotta be you gotta be real with yourself. You gotta know what you what you're being able what you what you're able to do. And if you can do it, you feel me? Like, I knew what I could do, you know, all the years I've played basketball, organized, high school, played against college, professional, regardless of what level they were at. I, uh, I always showed out, but that was also, there was also times where I doubted myself, doubted my skills, overthought. It's hard to say that. But at the same time, it's the truth. You feel me? So one of the main things about this documentary is trying to get trying to get exposure. You know, I I grew up in Philly where it's not really a lot of exposure in terms of sports. Like, you know, it happens, but that's to it's really it's a lot of politics over there. Moving to Florida, it was Less politics. No one knew me when I first moved. Uh, I didn't really get to play my senior season due to eligibility issues with transferring in the middle of the year. I played about the last six games, five games. I averaged about, let's, we could say 16, 16 and seven, which wasn't bad considering I didn't even know I was going to play or not. My biggest weakness at the moment, like I said, is that mental, that mental block sometimes. I can really just make a list of everything I want to work on, but my biggest weakness is definitely my mental. It's, it's not hard to, to break that barrier. But some of my strengths, I would, I would probably say passing, shooting, uh, dribbling, or well, more so playmaking. Uh, you know, being the player that that coaches want. You know, I'm I'm down for anything. I didn't just learn how to be a, a point guard. I learned how to play the whole game, rebounding, passing, shooting, etc. You, you know. So one of my biggest motivations is definitely you know. I mean, everybody gives up so easily on their dreams when stuff doesn't work out. Unfortunately for me, you know, stuff hasn't worked out with me. I was supposed to play, I was, I was supposed to be in school right now, playing due to certain circumstances with injuries and coaching. It's not, it, it didn't really, you know, it didn't really go as planned. And it was hard, you know, uh, going through that, that, that day to not being able to play no more to um, almost really going to school for free. But, you know, there's always there's always a different path. Everybody has their own own path to get into, to get into where they want to be. Yeah, uh, I started playing maybe around seven, eight. Then started taking it serious, you know, workouts and stuff like that. So maybe about seventh grade, you know, I was about 12, 13. 
But now I was already a late bloomer. Uh, if it wasn't for my grandma, I really wouldn't be playing. For, for my uh, uh, a Christmas present, she she uh, bought me a basketball court. My friend, honestly, after after that, I was really outside every day playing. Uh, I even put the court down to like eight foot dunk. Uh, just having just having fun playing the game. You know what I mean? Uh, like you could see like the court was small. And we would dunk just to have fun. You know, it wasn't nothing serious. You know what I mean? And that's really where it came from, the love for the game. So some of my favorite players and players to study are definitely uh, Javon Quinterly, uh, Isaiah Briscoe, John Morant, Luka Doncic. Uh, watch a lot of Kobe. That's that's a given. Uh, Damian Lillard, Adam Miller, just a, a couple players. When did I start getting better? I would definitely say my freshman year, around that time. Like I lived in North Philly, so I had this gym down the street, literally a gym down the street that my, my uh, old head, you know, RIP to him, RIP Pooh, but he would literally open the gym for me. I would go and just, just play, so. Because one day the these runs ended. Eventually, I see these, there's three people coming, and they got the gym to themselves, and it ended up being uh, my OG Quinn and his and his uh, his son and his uh, and Mo. So Quinn's dad, you know, he he really showed me the game. Like he opened my eyes. Like. He laid the foundations. You know, it's a real big shout out to him because if it wasn't for him, I really wouldn't um, be where I'm at, honestly. How did I get the name, you know, Bug, J Boogie, you know? And it's like, it really came from my friend. So one day at the, at a park, I started dribbling. I'm dancing with the ball, you know what I mean? I'm, I just won't stop doing my friend said, man, he kind of boogie with it. And after that, it really just stuck. I had the J. This is Coach Quinn, Happy Hollow Fighting Tigers. Juan Pedro might be my favorite player I've ever coached. Not just because it's Juan Pedro, but of course, because he works hard. He knows he had a late start, but he's still one of my favorite players. Um, if he continues to work, he can play. I wish he never left the city. I could have got him way better. But with that being said, you gotta watch him work and watch him work and watch him work. He definitely will be playing for somebody's school in the very near future. If he comes home, I can put him in a school right now. But I'm happy he at where he at, because everybody getting murdered up here. I don't need nothing happening. None of my kids to play for me. That's my guy. Um, you got any questions about one? Let me know. It's my guy.